What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. Today we have some OG YouTubers, ones that we have followed since we since before we started social media. I can't believe that we finally got to meet them. I also can't believe it took us so long to finally meet them, you know? I agree. And they live in Nashville. They're new here, which is even like crazier because... Just right up the road. Jess and Gabe Conti. Yes. This was a pleasant conversation. They casually have over 15 million social media followers. That's right. They share their life on YouTube and on social media. They have a newborn daughter. Not newborn. She's almost one. But uh, a young daughter. They're new parents. We talk about their relationship, parenting, posting it all on social media and their strategies behind it. And what brought them to Nashville. That's right. They each have a book. Jess wrote a day-by-day guided journal. That's what it's called. Gabe wrote a mission for meeting, and they just came with a podcast that you can check out. It's called So Far So Good. These two are really fun. Uh, you'll notice Jess's Australian accent, mm-hmm. and we cover a wide range of topics, including mental health, parenting, we kind of get into a philosophical discussion. And actually, Gabe and I are going to Las Vegas together to watch the <laughs> Formula One race. So we were fast friends. That's an interesting combo there. And I also invited him to a 6 a.m. workout. With the Datterdays crew at, okay. on Saturday at 6 a.m. And I went to the wrong location, and he showed up the right location. So wow. we already have a lot of memories together. <laughs> it's good. It's good so far. But Jess, Gabe, thank you for the time. If you want to find out more about these two, we'll link their information. Without further ado, we bring you Jess and Gabe Conti. Do you prefer to be called uh, Gabriel? Oh, I don't, I don't care. Gabe, okay. Gabriel. Yeah, it's whatever. I introduced Jess. myself as Jess, Gabriel. Yeah. I grew up as Gabby. Really? Uh, but he doesn't well, like that anymore. In, so well, yeah, don't call him Gabby. <laughs> well, no, no, no. In because this, if I say Gabby, people yeah. have that reaction. They go, "Really?" And then I have to explain that in Spanish, Gabby oh, is yeah. a normal like nickname for Gabriel, but yeah. convert it to English and I have a girl's name. Oh, so right. it's like I didn't didn't take it that way. Yeah, but w- we have family in Tijuana. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sick. yeah, but like. It's just easier to introduce myself as Gabriel and then whatever. People. There's some yeah. people who call me Gabriel. Some people call me Gabe. My uh, Everyone from back home calls me Gabby. So, so. What about use the accent one more time? I know. Gabriel. Rafael Cora. When that comes out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whoops. All right, everybody. Welcome to the show with Jess and Gabriel. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us. You tried your, you tried your best. It did uh, didn't, didn't land, babe. I did a little tug girl. Yeah. It's, honestly, you guys are internet royalty. It is a, it's a yeah, pleasure. Yeah, you are. Oh, wow. I, oh my thank god! You. Appreciate it. <laughs> I guess I'm not. I, I don't want to say you know I'm like a diehard fan, but I've been watching your videos for quite a while, and it's like you've been in the game for a long time. Thank you. Wow! I feel like you're mm-hmm. one of the official OGs. Is of that? just like setting oh. setting the stage. Well, yeah. Wow! What an intro! <laughs> I feel, <laughs> oh I feel my honored. Gosh. That's that's hilarious. But no, no, I look I'll at people who've it. like been doing it for longer than us. Yeah. And I, I'm like, no, they're the OGs. Yeah. We just started. I don't know vlogging. When we got, uh, well, right around when we got engaged was when we started vlogging and stuff. And it just like turned into. You were engaged 2015, married 2016? Um, Engaged 2016, married 2016. Okay. And met 2016. (laughs) Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, at the beginning. Well, we met online at the end of 2015. It was like no December. Mm -hmm. And then beginning of 2016, we met in person for the first time. But then by the end of that year, we were married. And then when in between did you That's like juicy. when did, yeah in between yeah. did you become engaged? Okay, our timeline is February we started dating, September got engaged, December got married. That's amazing. Yeah. That's a really. Sometimes I'm like, how did we do a three month? How did we plan a wedding? Yeah, in three months? It, it is crazy to think about. We just didn't like long distance. Yeah, is what it came mm-hmm. down to, and it was it was like long. It was like U.S. to Australia long yeah. distance. So we were not. And we were going to do the wedding in December, but we were we were thinking like, okay, do we do it in three months, December, like from September to December, or like, like a plan year it, or a year and yeah. three months, so like family could travel and do all mm-hmm. that. And we were like, we're not doing long distance. Yeah, for and my year. mom too was like, if you know, like you're obviously getting married, like why would you wait? Yeah, which mm-hmm. was really nice too because I was leaving my parents mm-hmm. to move here, so that was like definitely the the green light. Yeah, to go ahead. I will say engagement is so hard. So. 
Props to you guys. I wish our engagement was three months. How long was How it? long was your engagement? Ours was nine months. Okay. Oh, really that's really short. Yeah. That's like short in the grand scheme of yeah. how long some engagements are. I well, feel like five, that's the perfect. Dude, the f- three, yeah. five years. What I'm like, doing, what are you doing, guys? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I know. Move the puck, guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we had not a similar situation because it wasn't long distance, but we had a timeline of it was either going to be like nine months because of NFL mm-hmm. or it's going to be a year and nine months because of NFL. Oh, my God. Uh. And it was like, Definitely nine months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I actually had a vendor at our wedding say once, I asked her what the like ideal time to plan a wedding was, and she said three months. I wonder why. She said when you book it, no matter how far out, they start planning like three Three months months. ahead. Interesting. Oh my gosh. Well, we did the right thing. You guys did it right. (laughs) Strategy right there. That's awesome. Um, and then vlogging, why pull the trigger on that? Why did you start vlogging when you got engaged? Um we were both doing social media before we met. Um, I was doing it like professionally as my job. Mm-hmm. And then she, hers was like a hobby, but she still had a bit of a following. And then we were making videos together while we were dating. And then when I was planning to propose to her, I, uh, I was like, okay, there's going to be an engagement video that we'll post somewhere. <laughs> But that'd be weird if I just like post it on my channel. Mm. And then I'm like, do I just give it to her and post it on her channel? Like, I don't know. It was like a weird thing. And then and then we were kind of talking about vlogging anyway and like starting a channel, like a separate channel to start vlogging. So it kind of lined up. And we we did a, two vlogs before we did the engagement. Yeah, something video like that. Or something like that. So. But also, you never told me that the reason we started the channel was like because you were thinking about the engagement video. Yeah. yeah. You know? So it's just <laughs> funny like hearing your side of like, where do we post the engagement video? It's like, we, need, we should start vlogging, babe. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Funny. Oh, man. I, uh, yeah, I, I love YouTube because I feel like it's just like this archive. We consider what we post as shareable home videos. So it's like, oh, that's they're funny. not great YouTube videos. Don't no. get me wrong. Yeah. But for us, it's like, I want to watch this yeah. 10 years from now. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to freaking post this online where I could just search for it anyway. But it's, uh, I love having our, Wedding video on there, our engagement mm-hmm. video. Mm-hmm. We watch it every year on our anniversary. It's do you really? Yeah. 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 We wow. Should do that. We should do that. Every it's time fun. We, every time we watch it, I'm like, I cringe a little bit. I know. I think I yes. cringe. Do you cringe all the time? <laughs> oh man. Yeah. You Why think do you cringe? Back, yeah. Uh, we were so young. I was 22 and she was, I was 20, 20. So it was like. Yep. I just I think know. I would do things so differently. So different. You know? Yes. So I don't know, but it's also like you watch it and you're just like, oh, like we were just so little. Yeah. So we should watch it. We yeah, we that's something we should do, for sure. I that's a know. cool tradition. Yeah, we have like is. a similar experience that we look back and it's like mm-hmm. cringy, and all I can think is like we are so naive to yeah. everything. But mm. but it's sweet. It is yeah. sweet. It is sweet. <laughs> and we we've gone to like friends' weddings now who have been together eight nine years, but they're yeah. just now getting married. And their weddings look more like what I could see a wedding being like yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Totally. But they're mature. Yeah. And they're like. I don't know. It's just yeah. different. I wouldn't change this thing. What What would you Aww. change? Like, what comes to mind when you say that? I think like just everything. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> same. The people we invited, yeah. <laughs> the guy I was with. No, no literally. <laughs> actually, well, oh, yeah, what, <laughs> yeah. No, but there actually are like, there's like people who I'm really close with now, like friends that we've met after yeah. being yeah. married and all that stuff. That I'm like, man, I wish like, yeah, I would yeah. now. I didn't even know you then. I would have you as a groomsman. Yeah, hundred kind of percent. You know, so. That's one of those things where it's like you're so close with someone they weren't even at your wedding. Yeah. You know, I think for me, I always think about like when we got married, we hadn't even been dating for a year. I didn't cry. Same. And mm. I think if I was to do it now and like I would write my vows so differently, I would just ball the whole day, I think. Because mm-hmm. our relationship is obviously like so much closer. Yeah. Mm. So I'm always like, should we get married again? <laughs> <laughs> the 10 year vow yeah. renewal. That's that. what we've been talking about. Yeah. I want oh, really? a 10-year vow renewal so bad. It would, that would, it would be sick. Girl, you yeah. want a trip and just an excuse <laughs> yeah, to take sure. it. Like. And to get a new dress. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. But no, it was the same thing. Like, we were young. We were 23. Yeah, 23. Yeah. And That's awesome. Like, I was too shy to write my own vows. I didn't want to say it in front of everybody. Really? So we did, like, more traditional vows. Mm-hmm. Nice. And... I was like emotionally like numb. I was like, I can't cry. I can't do anything. I can't ruin my And makeup. watching back, I'm like, oh, I just, I love you so much. I know. I love you so much. 
You guys wrote yeah. your vows. What was? Did you have the classic leather bound journal kind of thing with the? <laughs> no, I had a. I think we had a folded like a piece, piece of paper. Of paper. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those. If we had four months to plan, we would have. Well, <laughs> we would have had the leather yeah. bound journal. <laughs> <laughs> what was the strategy with writing the vows? How'd you guys approach that? I'm curious. Oh my gosh, I remember we went to. In Australia, I lived like by a bay, yeah. and we went there to like write together. It was like where I'd go and pray. So it was like a special and. I got baptized there too. So it was like a special place for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I, th how did we even I think our like it? sync on it was like a page, like yeah. how long. <laughs> so it wasn't like I have like five pages and yeah. then she has like a paragraph yeah, yeah. or something. Just like, and then keep I, it I think my sister heard both of them to make sure that they like were on the same level, yeah. you know, like yeah. not too funny, <laughs> not too deep, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's clutch. That's yeah. Really yeah. yeah. yeah so they were like on idea. the same level, which mm -hmm. is good. I could just have Chat GPT write it. Bro. <laughs> I literally have it write emails for me sometimes. I'm like, ah, oh, what do I say here? And I just like throw in what I want to no say. Idea. I wonder what it would say. We should try. Andrew tried that it once. Funny. Really? Wait, having it write vows. Well, we really? were doing this video married in the metaverse because I don't know. I just oh, wanted to go. No, you're doing this video. <laughs> we did the video. I was like, <laughs> what are we doing? You're like, this is oh your idea. God. Don't <laughs> drag me into this. Yeah. Sean's game for all of it. But. Yeah. I, I love that about marriage, though. And honestly, about getting older is it means more now because mm -hmm. of the past seven or eight years you've yeah. been married. And yeah. it's like, so you, you would be way more emotional mm -hmm. if you could kind of front load all those things that you've been through yeah. and what Gabe's meant. And it's like, it's so cool when you kind of see the the journey or the yeah. path start taking shape and, yeah. and like how god's worked in it it's it's powerful stuff yeah but i'm excited for that with kids too You're like oh Aww. my gosh great so you guys have a one-year-old yeah one-year-old little girl Kills me. little girl oh man she's like she just makes us both melt but like especially gabe it's just yeah. he's such a softy now uh-huh yeah Girls do it to yeah. you, man. Girls, oh, girls. Bro. I'll just cry right now. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Oh my gosh, I know, man. And yeah. just like she's at the age now, just started walking, and um, yeah, she's like at the age where uh, she's like is giving me something. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Really like, there's fun. like uh, she's reacting to stuff. She's saying a few words, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like you're a human, and like, uh, like I'm having fun with her. You know? Yeah. 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 People have always told us that it gets better. Like you won't be able to believe it, but it just keeps getting better, yeah, yeah. and it does. Ugh. And the three-year-old phase with a little girl, I don't think I personally don't think can be beat yet. Really, I because they have conversations and they have emotions and yeah, they have yeah. personality, and they'll literally <laughs> sit together <laughs> on the front porch and like talk. Ugh. Oh, that's awesome! And yeah, a three-year-old little girl is. My favorite part. I'm excited for you guys. Oh, yeah. I know, because so right now she'll like try to talk to us or she'll like do a funny face. And I'm just like, what are you thinking? And uh -huh. so I can't wait till that age where she uh -huh. can actually like tell us. And I bet I bet your daughter just comes out with like the most random things. Yes. Oh, yes. <sighs> I just can't wait. We try not to cuss. Her recent thing is, <laughs> but, but we do say freaking a lot yeah like, oh yeah, yeah yeah and so she's been saying that <laughs> oh it's like simultaneously so cute but you're also like all right i she, gotta cut it out man she said the other day she's like that freaking dude and i was like <laughs> or she's like it's a freaking mermaid and i was like stop <laughs> saying <laughs> that is so how funny. do you I, not laugh you know? it's so hard because like oh you gosh. can't especially in this phase you can't give attention to it yeah, yeah if you give yeah. attention to it it's even more you gotta like rep, like <laughs> drew we don't say that it's so funny uh, i think that all the time well, yeah. <clears throat> wow <Yeah. laughs> daughters they get you man yeah, they make yeah. Me emotional no but i think that all the time we'll just be driving around having a conversation i'm like oh she's like in the back seat yeah. just yeah. like listening, listening to everything a sponge gotta, yeah mm. oh my goodness I am curious though with your guys's I feel like there's a, a parallel here of like you guys share your entire lives on social media. It's part of your job, but it's your passion, it's all these things. Mm -hmm. Um for us, we've figured out our boundaries of like what mm -hmm. we talk about, what we don't talk about, what we share, what we don't. In your guys' it's marriage and now in your parenting with your mm -hmm. daughter, how have you guys navigated the roles of like this is what we will share, this is what we'll talk about, but this is too far. What are the boundaries you guys have set up? Wow. Wow. Good question. But yeah, we've talked about this a lot. Yeah. We've had a lot of conversations about it. And it's definitely just going to continually evolve uh -huh. on as she gets older. 
there's you know more kids like what what that all looks like but um yeah I don't know we've been doing it for so long that it's we're definitely at a point which is why we just started our own podcast because it's Mm -hmm. we want to be able to still like connect with our audience really personally which I think podcasts are great for but there's a level of like we can talk about the things that we want to talk about that are happening in our family's life without needing to have like a camera mm-hmm. in our house all the time you know what I mean and we're still we still vlog every now and then um but we definitely want to just keep things more private I guess um and that's kind of th- where a lot of it like <clears throat> stems from is us just more and more kind of valuing our privacy mm-hmm. as a family especially with kids you know mm-hmm. there's I don't know, the internet's a crazy, scary place for, mm-hmm. for kids. So just trying to be wise about it and make the right decisions to protect our daughter, you know, because that's like one of the main goals as parents is, you know, uh, protect your kids. But yeah, anyway, I think I think podcasting, like the world of podcasting, but then also us creating a podcast mm-hmm. kind of came at a perfect mm-hmm. time to be able to like yeah. take our career into the next phase of, of yeah, the business and and everything. So, yeah, I think it's allowed us to like share our experience with becoming parents. And like, we have a lot of viewers who are parents, especially like similar stage of life with like a one year old or like one child. And so it's been really cool to like be able to share that while still keeping privacy. I think like the more we've done this, Especially me, I would say more me. Mm-hmm. We've realized that like I love a private life, mm-hmm. and I'm like, hmm, that doesn't really <laughs> work out well with our job. So yeah, yeah, yeah. a podcast has been a great place for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you guys are kind of what ten ten episodes in, maybe eight so far. So like, good. Is so far, so, so good. good. Yeah. What did we yeah. post today or yesterday? Honestly, I can't keep count. It, it's Episode something eight, like I that. I think it was yeah. something eight. like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. what can people expect from the show? Um, you lots of laughs. I feel, like we, <laughs> I feel like we just have a good time on there. Yeah, we're trying to really have a good time. Just yeah, I, I don't know, be funny with the conversations we have and entertain people at the same time, like provide value and deep conversations and stuff like that. But um, yeah, so far so good. The reason why we called it so far so good was uh, I, we feel like that phrase uh, encapsulates like going on a journey together, like the journey of life, and we um, kind of like what I was talking about, still wanting to have like uh i guess a level of intimacy with our audience and like creating a space to where we're still connecting with them um so so far so good came from a place of wanting to keep that connection with our audience and make it feel like we're still going through life together uh and just kind of connecting on a deeper level with longer form content and stuff like that so just kind of like talking about life but that's very broad but more so like journeying through life together Mm -hmm. you know it I feel like pretty closely <clears throat> reflects what your content somewhat was, which is kind of just sitting down like in the living room, you mm-hmm. know, and talking yeah. about whatever subject. But uh, I love podcasting, man. It's like oh, it's fun. It's been really yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah, it's been cool. Yeah, it's great. Um, can't wait to be on. I can't. Thanks for them. Oh you guys are. Gosh. You guys are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on. You guys are uh, podcasting royalty. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, will you? No. <laughs> we started. We started a couple things. Well, Sean, I'll tell the story. When did you start it, right. Andrew? Go ahead, tell the story. <laughs> right, go ahead. Okay, that happens I was all the time. By the way, I'm like five really? days postpartum with our daughter, and he launched it. <clears throat> he launched it. We had not filmed a single thing. We hadn't like nothing. He literally said to the world we just started a podcast <laughs> and it charted it charted to number one with no episode we had the, and i we was had the like trailer up we had the trailer. Uh, that's uh, amazing guys. and i literally was like that's you piece of poop but <laughs> you piece of freaking poop, <laughs> <laughs> piece of poop. <laughs> i don't know if i've told you this stuff, but it was stemmed from the same feeling of we're we have a kid now yeah mm-hmm. we're we make videos for a living what if we don't want this to be what we do anymore yeah, so. yeah podcasting i just uh but i remember it was like 
seven days postpartum. He's like, we really got to get the full episode up. I was like, I'm going to kill you. Oh, I was, <laughs> I was still in bed seven days. Yes, yeah, same. I was like post C-section. I couldn't oh even get God. off the couch. Oh, my God. Mistakes were made, for yeah. sure. Dang. Mistakes were but now it's like but our favorite thing we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's four years in now. But wow. Yeah. yeah, but it's a good origin story. You know? What's your guys' daughter's name? Makaya. Makaya. Mm-hmm. What's the origin of that name? Um, We... We were looking at biblical names online, but kind of wanted something unique and, but not like too unique. It, it was like probably like the a, hottest mm, decision, by the way, is yeah. picking a name. Oh, yeah. We didn't want like a made up name that was like, well, what are you doing? Yeah. But we wanted <laughs> yeah. something that, I don't know, just felt unique to us, but then had some sort of meaning. Yeah. So Micaiah yeah. is in the Old Testament, but it's a, a man's name. Mm-hmm. And so we spelt it differently. And the mm-hmm. the girl spelling of it apparently is Hawaiian for um, ocean, ocean princess, princess or something like that. Right. And we're like, okay, cute. Hawaii like is in between where we both lived, and we were like trying to make it deep. Yeah, <laughs> I did, I did. But, but then, but then we the, just liked it. <laughs> yeah, then the prophet in the Bible is like prophet like speaking truth, and that's like really needed in our generation. So that was something kind of cool to have connected to her name. Yeah. But we didn't decide. <clears throat> on her name until she was in our arms. Even then we were just like, I don't know if this happened to you guys too, but we were like, okay, is it Micaiah? It was just like, yeah. it's such a bizarre Oh, we had got moment. massive cold feet. Really? Oh, yeah, because like at our hospital, they wouldn't let you leave without filling out the social security paperwork. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. So you had to write down a name. Did you, but did you guys decide on the name beforehand? We thought we were set. We thought we were <laughs> set. <laughs> and then we were holding her and we're like, I don't, I got nervous. We're going to go with Drew for, uh, we don't have a meeting or anything. It was just, you know. We do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But (laughs) it's tradition in his family to name the first son after the father. And we we didn't want to do that. And I was like, how about we name a daughter Drew? That's really cool. Oh, wait. That's that's really cool. I always envisioned having a daughter first and then her just being like an absolute boss, you know, like commanding a, a room or situation. So, yeah. It worked out great. But we're filling out the paperwork and, uh, I was like, maybe we should just go with Vanessa. I think, no, Vanessa, I think, <laughs> I think Vanessa's it. No way. We never got, talked about this. Nailed, dude, hard. It was Wait, never a name well, that we even like <laughs> was brought up. He's like, how about Vanessa? <laughs> and I was like, who are you? Oh my god! It also was kind that of, so it funny. gave us cold feet because like our daughter's name is Drew Hazel. Mm-hmm. And especially in Nashville, it was kind of the beginning of like more modern names. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember when they later in my arms they said do you have a name and i was like her name's drew hazel and they're like oh hazel's so beautiful and i was like oh but what about drew <laughs> but her name's <laughs> drew <laughs> yeah. and nobody like drew? would pick it up and i was like oh no you're this like is looking at the name. nurses reactions do you like it yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but it, it's so nerve-wracking naming a baby because yeah. it's permanent mm-hmm. now do you look at her and you're like Vanessa, like, oh yeah, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> like she can never I be love, Vanessa. But I love that name for a girl. Thank you. Yeah. Vanessa. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Okay, so <laughs> no, Hazel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, it was yeah, it's nerve wracking. As a parent, I spend more time scrolling through the TV and like all of the programs trying to find kid friendly content than I would care to admit to. And it's really hard to find something that checks all of the boxes and is like good morals, good values, teaches your kids good things. But also is entertaining. <sighs> it w- It's impossible. It's always fine. And it takes so much effort until we found the streaming service, Minnow. Minnow is the premier streaming service for kids that offers faith-based and values-driven content that parents can always trust. We are so excited to be partnering with Minnow because we truly believe in this company and what they stand for. Minnow has tons of shows, movies, and devotionals that touch on a variety of topics to keep your kids engaged while also filling their minds with what matters most. Some of our kids' favorite shows include Veggie Tales, classic, I grew up on it, Coco Talk, they got the Laugh and Grow Bible series. There's so much good stuff on there. Over 3,000 different videos that your kid will love and you can trust. It's perfect for family movie nights, sick days, or just some downtime. And let me tell you, guys, I have notes in so many places around our house, on my phones, of blacklisted shows. You'd never have to worry about that with Minnow. It's all amazing content. 
Plus, all their shows and movies are screened by a team of parents, pastors, and educators to ensure that they're age-appropriate, entertaining, and align with faith-based values. I love that we never have to worry about questionable content or ads popping up because we know that Minnow has our kids' best interests in mind. Not to mention that the shows are cute, catchy, and super fun. Our kids love them. Whether you're a parent looking for content to watch together as a family or just need a break and want to be able to press play and feel okay, try Minnow. We stream Minnow in our house, and we want you to do the same. Head to GoMinnow.com and use the code FAMILYMADE to get your first month for free. That's G-O-M-I-N-N-O dot com forward slash FAMILYMADE for one free month of Minnow streaming service. If you want shows that are as entertaining and engaging as everything else, but that reflect your values and teach your kids about the things that actually matter, sign up for Minnow today. Um, In regards to your guys' faith, Mm -hmm. I feel like you guys are very faith-based people, Mm -hmm. especially now that you're in Nashville, too. It's kind of the world's colliding. (laughs) But where do you find that line with social media? Because it's such an amazing thing to steward, but Mm -hmm. it can be very Mm -hmm. polarizing with the modern day social media world. Totally. Yeah, we um we started all of it like not like our goal wasn't to be like mm-hmm. Christian speakers or anything like that. Yeah. Not that that's like what we do. Obviously we do like speak on our faith mm-hmm. when it's appropriate, but our main like view on it is that we are in the entertainment space mm-hmm. and uh we talk about and show our life and our life obviously we're believers so it's gonna come out Mm -hmm. when we're talking about our life or showing our life or whatever but um yeah when it comes to like I don't know when it comes and there's so many like issues in the world that especially as Christians that we want to talk about and weigh in on and everything like that um, but we've kind of d- through lots of conversations and talking about like, what do we actually like post about when it comes to like issues or current events or, or anything like that. And we decided that since it's, we will be ineffective if we try and speak on everything, especially when that's like not our, our platform. We're not like Christian speakers mm. or like uh, political like but yeah or we're like yeah. educators or anything like that uh, we're making entertainment content so like as a family and as like our family business like what is the thing that we're putting a stake in the ground for and we are going to be uh talking about or the things that we will talk about and that for us was human trafficking is just something that we're both really passionate about and um, as a family we donate to organizations that um, deal with human trafficking and stuff like that so um that's one thing that we will mainly talk about mm-hmm. on our social media when it's, mm-hmm. I don't want to say appropriate because that's a weird word to say, but when, like when we do, if that yeah. makes sense. And do you remember the quote that you used in your book that is kind of around, I always forget it, but it's like, dun dun dun. Oh, oh, I, I know. <laughs> and oh. then when. You're using sounds it? for yeah, the yeah, quote. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're saying. <laughs> what? You know what I mean? That quote. Um, at, at all times, preach the gospel, and when necessary, use words. That was it. I'm I surprised you got it. You I got wasn't, that it's not my. That. It's not my quote. Dun- yeah, I know. I know. It has a cadence to it. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I will but. say that that's what we always talked about because he mm-hmm. came from a family that was so. They valued like outward words preaching at all mm-hmm. times. And I lived a more like camera forward life Mm -hmm. at a Mm -hmm. young age. And I was always like lead by example. And when they ask how, that's your opportunity to just like share. Yeah. I love that. I like, I love that. Yeah. You guys are (laughs) nailed it. it. That's so funny. Wow, that was amazing. (laughs) And you understood what she said. I knew what she was talking about. That's seven years of marriage right there. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you're from you're from Australia. I am, yeah. As is Hillsong, is that right? Yes. Was that like a big? Was that any part of your story? Yeah, I. That was the church that I went to in Australia, and the church that Gabe went to when uh, he lived in LA. So, yeah, we, before we met, and then we started going to 
Hillsong in LA after we got married for a little bit. Then we w- went to another smaller church. We wanted like a more in LA. It's just like so crazy. We yeah. wanted mm-hmm. like just a more intimate community. But but that was one of the first things we talked about in DMs where we met um, because I was heading out to LA on a trip by myself. And so I messaged him to ask like what churches he went to just so I could like visit some while I was in LA. One of that, them, was, like, that was how she slid into the DMs. She's like, what church? The church you card. Nice. And I was like, a Christian? You shot the first shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I yeah. did. Nice, nice. He wouldn't have known who I was. I was just like a little Australian girl. <laughs> I, I had a buddy, an Australian friend who was staying with me in LA at the time. For like three weeks, he was just crashing at my place. And then she saw me through his stuff. And yeah. then she DM'd me and then we just started talking. Wow. Yeah. yeah. What church you go to? That's a good pickup line. And then he yeah. said, said Hillsong. So that was like, oh, I go to Hillsong in, a, in Australia. So yeah. that was the start of it. Honestly, that might be the best pickup line. I was, I was gonna say it <laughs> weeds out so much. Yeah, in one question. Yeah, yeah, it was unintentional, but it worked. So. Yeah. I have a friend whose pickup line was crazy. Just got married, so it worked. But he would weed out people online by saying, "Are you Christian? And if so, how many kids do you want?" That's, that's, too so <laughs> that's, so that's too aggressive. No, but it, it, made, it made sense for his personality. So yeah. for someone to respond to that like positively, it's like, oh, yeah, that's a match made in heaven. And it worked. You know? Now he's married. Yeah. Now he's yeah. married. As of like two days ago. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Dang. Good for that guy. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, we've taken a turn, I feel like, the last nine months where it was, I don't know, we were never... We would never do like a podcast episode on our faith. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For no reason. It was just not top of mind. But then the last nine months have been really interesting where we're like, oh no, this is necessary. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. maybe it's an old guy thing too. Like, or you have kids. <laughs> and, old guy. Well, no. 31 and so old. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, but. Bro, I feel you. I turned 29 next month. Dang. Like, <laughs> oh, almost 30. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> 35. <laughs> like, like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's crazy but uh I, I i love to read and at some point you get to like read and join jordan peterson or whatever mm-hmm. and all these guys are saying that this there's only one truth right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they're all just repackaging the bible mm-hmm. essentially mm-hmm. like yeah, all yeah. like anybody that hits a mainstream i feel like is just doing some different twist on some, a biblical concept yeah mm-hmm. you also yeah. realize i've had this i don't even know i've talked to you about it but you think about the Bible being an ancient text, and it's more than that, but there's thousands of years of wisdom mm-hmm. that's been distilled in these yeah. stories. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's it's the peak examples of all these different things that you can go through, like betrayal or marriage mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. parent. And it's like just thousands of years of iterating, like, hey, that that story best tells this lesson. It's, it's like yeah yeah i love it it's just there's no way around it it's like really valuable stuff anyway did, did i say that in a cool I, way no no yeah. that's that's awesome and what's really cool is how it all just yeah. all ties together and you yeah. know something yeah. that was said a thousand years before is like yeah dude. perfectly like prophesied to what happened a thousand years later you know what i mean so it's just it's crazy the whole story of it like the mini stories is like the lessons and then yeah. just mm. the truth of it being truth being yeah. confirmed do you guys have the uh, Jesus Storybook Bible that you no, read? No, oh, I we it's actually so much great. about yeah, it. Yeah, we've, we've amazing. We'll send you one. on the Christmas list. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I was also just, I guess uh, Islam is taken, uh, or it's like thriving right now. Oh, really? And um, they were talking about the reason is because men in today's society are struggling, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and Islam is like this super masculine, like high testosterone conquer the world type vibe and then it got me really pumped about jesus as like the Mm -hmm. main figure though because he's like this gentle warrior he's like the guy that hangs with kids Mm -hmm. you know but he's also the dopest i'm just Mm -hmm. reflecting on how you said nine months ago you didn't talk about faith now we're (laughs) 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 Uh, jesus Jesus is the goat i was (laughs) telling you this the whole time (laughs) Oh, man. Anyway, I was yeah. I was just gonna he's add. Jeez. Oh, he's the goat. Now we're man. talking about is is uh. long. Um, I will say to give context to that the past nine months, I feel like we've had so many people around in our lives, so their community, or family, friends, mm-hmm. just really been struggling with so many different things. 
And the only way that we've been able to deal with it is like faith. Mm. Yeah. And if you don't mind talking about this, you were very open not too long ago about like your season of depression and just mm -hmm. like you shared that with the world. One, how did you handle it? How did you come through it mm -hmm. together? And what was your purpose or like what was your reasoning to yourself in saying, I want to share this with everybody? Um, it was affecting work. Like I couldn't work. I, I couldn't like make content like mm -hmm. uh, as frequently just because I was so, um, yeah, I was just in a bad spot and it was like, I had to say something at mm -hmm. some point just because, you know, and at, at first it was like, how did we phrase it back in 2019? Like, I'm not doing too well. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break. Yeah. You know. Um, I think we needed to, though, because, like, we <clears throat> were posting weekly. And there's only so much, like, faking you can do mm -hmm. on camera, you mm -hmm. know. So it was really, like, burning you out. Yeah. So even, like, missing a couple weeks, like, people are going to notice, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And then... I I don't I don't know like what if it was like a s super calculated decision on thinking if I was going to share or not I I'm I wear my heart on my sleeve just like that's just my personality so I was pretty open talking about it um and then as as far as like going through it and like trying to get through it like Jess was a massive help um, just as far like her personality is so just patient and kind and loving and just, you know, she would not push me too far as far as like, like she knew what I needed to do. Like when you're depressed, you don't, there's so many things that you know you need to do, but you just can't get yourself to do them. Like wake up consistently at the same time, exercise. Cause it's, you know great for dopamine like all the things that's like good to do when you are depressed you just don't want to do you know and Jess knew these things and was so incredibly like I don't know tactful in her way of uh, uh, the way she approached it was like helping me to the point to where she wasn't pushing me too far if that makes sense and just like being mm -hmm. so encouraging the whole time and um it was I don't, yeah, I don't know how how I could have really gone through it if it wasn't being married to, to you, Jess. Um, but then in addition, are you going to cry? No. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. Um, <laughs> that's not my wedding video. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, but uh, at the same time, to bring it back to faith, um, we, uh, yeah, I just, it felt like, God was using this to just keep me close to him because I, I, I have like a very driven personality and um, a very obsessive personality. So when it came to like our career and working and I just continually like go down the spiral of, of working myself way too hard and pushing myself too much. And then, you know, it. Uh, now I'm very aware of it. If it happens, I'm like, oh, I can tell I'm starting to burn out a little bit where before it'd be like no, that's me being weak. I need to push myself harder, you know? Um, and it, it, as much as it feels like a weakness, having mental health issues and everything like that, it, it really feels like it was a gift that God gave me to keep me reliant on him, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then just really going through, like even going through the Psalms was like huge, just reading through it and, and mm -hmm. hearing like, you know, stuff like David went through and just like his, these like s amazing songs of like talking about being like at high highs and really low lows, which is like how I kind of experience life being more emotional. Like my highs are super high my lows are super low and just being able to relate to that and it being like biblical in scripture and, um, you know, knowing that I'm not crazy for feeling that way. And, um, and then just like key verses that helped me that I would just like, as I'm <clears throat> asleep at night, just repeating them in my head and stuff like that. Just really having to be reliant on God during that season was massive, you know? Would you mind putting me in your, your mind 
Like, what is it like being in the mind of a d- depressed, in a depressed state? Oh, man. Um, it's, it's very gradual. In, in over time, like even recently, it's, I, I know when I'm starting to feel a little burnt out and I'll give myself like days off to, to like combat it just cause I know where it can lead. So it's like constantly feeling overwhelmed and then my mind not being able to shut off, <clears throat> shut off about the overwhelm. And it's kind of like a, uh, uh, just, I hate saying spiral, but kind of like mm-hmm. a ping pong back and forth of feeling away emotionally. It makes you think a certain way, like things are getting worse. That makes you feel worse emotionally. So you think worse about a certain way and it just goes all the way down. And if you're not doing anything to combat it, then you get to a point where it's like, like waking up in the morning is like the hardest thing. Just like laying there and knowing that you should get out of bed but it is one like a just such a battle just to go like this with the covers and just take them off of you and just like put your feet on the ground because you don't want to start that ping pong like process kind of because you're already there and you're just like don't want to deal with life Mm. so it's just debilitating to like want to have to confront life and and yeah it's it's definitely hard to explain um but yeah it sucks that was insightful. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, that's that's fine. I'm, I wore my heart on my sleeve, so I can talk about it. And I'm, things are amazing now. So yeah. yeah, especially having a daughter, yeah, has been or just a, a kid, I guess, has been just given me so much purpose outside of our work world. Because mm-hmm. like even you know, it's like our marriage is our marriage, but it's also like we're running a business together, mm-hmm. and it's the the product that people are seeing is our relationship so so much of our world and our life is just centers around work um so we you know we put things in place to like like try not try try not uh working well we like take a sabbath so like every mm-hmm. saturday the freaking don't work. best Bro, it's yeah. the best oh my gosh it was yeah. life-changing when we started it and we're like how did we not have a rest day before well people because when you say sabbath i'm like yeah, yeah, I know. I'm it's out. like <laughs> I'm out. What are you? Yeah. What even is that? But you're like just a day of rest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or we read this book, Rest, uh, Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Yeah. Bro, I just finished mm. it. So good. Talks about Sabbath, and he's like, "What if you just had one day to do all the best yeah. things in life?" Mm. And so Sean and I wrote a list of yeah. all of our favorite things to do, like making a fire, e bikes, playing in the playroom with the kid, mm-hmm. Hot Wheels or whatever. And it's That's like awesome. taking the kids to the farmers market or <clears throat> yeah. whatever. Let's do as many of those as we can. It's oh dang, yeah. What do the things that yeah. missed the whole thing? Yeah, yeah. All these yeah. years. Yeah, well, one thing in that book that uh, that resonated with me is it, is at the very end he was talking about. It. He's like, I want to experience the goodness of God every day. Yeah, and that was. That was just like, oh my gosh, I don't feel like I do that. I'm too busy yeah. all the time thinking about work and, mm. and all this stuff. And, you know, having that day of rest to kind of like reset, put things into perspective and, you know, attack the week with purpose, not out of like obligation. Yeah. You know, so. What was the other book from him? God has a name. Dude, any book by that, any that book by John Mark John Mark Comer. But I think that's something that kind of comes with our business, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. all of ours. And it's kind of coming with just modern day business anymore, especially after COVID. Everything's virtual, so there's no nine to five. You don't yeah. go to work and then leave and get to leave it at home. Work is at home yeah. at all times. And with us, especially with social media, turning your brain off is impossible. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh. Because you're like, oh, we're actually going to Disney World this weekend. This would be a great video. Oh. Or like, exactly. <laughs> whatever it is. But yeah. then you're like, how do I balance this from taking a Sabbath and letting mm-hmm. this be fun and letting this. And that's it's this constant like hamster wheel. And I just want to say thank you for sharing that because we've been very open on our podcast about like eating disorders and anxiety and Mm. how we support each other through it. And I think the last question I had with that was just how did you identify it in him and how Mm. did you support him through it? I think just being married for so long now, I can tell, as he said, like, He's a very emotional person. So I can tell as soon as something is off. And 
I don't know. I think day to day, he's a very like driven, productive, motivated person. And so I could start to tell like even sleeping in or like it was just like little things that were starting to add up. And um, we were both going to therapy at the time um, to the same therapist. Well, the f- separately. The first time. First time, we yeah. We weren't. That's true. The first we time we went. Going. She, she, we were on family vacation in 2018 with not, not just us, like her, her whole family was in town and I was just like out of it. And she was like, when we get back to, we were still living in LA at the time. She was like, when we get back to LA, you're going to therapy. So it was like, she called someone to make sure that Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Yeah. It was really hard on that vacation too. I just remember like my family all being from Australia have never seen snow. And so we went to, um, a place in California that it was literally snowing and we all went out and Gabe didn't come. And so that, I think that was like one of the main things, like he just laid down in bed, stayed in the bedroom. Um, but yeah, the, so I'm thinking about the second time that Gabe went through depression, we were seeing the same therapist and I just like me not knowing much about depression. Mm -hmm. I just like wanted to know as much as I could. So I, even like in my own therapy session, I was just like, this stuff isn't important right now. Like I need to, Mm -hmm. I need to know more about like what Gabe is going through. So I was asking her about depression and she was explaining as much as she could to me and like what would be good for him, kind of what he was saying, like eating consistently, getting outside, Mm -hmm. like getting some sun and working out, um, waking up, having like good routines and so, yeah, the, it w- it's really hard watching your partner go through that and just, like, wanting to be, like, he can't see it while he's in it, but me going, like, I know what's good for mm-hmm. you. Like, mm-hmm. So just trying to be very, like, patient and, like, hey, I'm going for a walk. Do you want to come on a walk with me? And little things like that to just try to encourage it. Um but it's definitely hard and just encouraging him to like journal and like different things like that. But yeah, I think the most important thing for me was to like educate myself because Mm -hmm. I just like, I just didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. Balance is so interesting, isn't it? I'm even, I think to do extraordinary things, you have to have an extraordinary quality or drive, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, you hear all these stories about Olympians getting depressed. It's like, oh, you want a gold medal. But it's like mm. the very same quality mm. that led you to winning a gold medal is mm. w- is why you're depressed. Like you got to mm. – you have like this spinning wheel and nowhere to put it down to have traction. And your, um, like your drive that led you to this point mm. is kind of the same thing that now you have to check. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's just interesting to, to view it as like, okay, this is a really – beautiful thing that i've been given like this artistic vision but what's the what's the right priority of it or like Mm -hmm. what's the right placement of Mm -hmm. it anyway yeah yeah uh, that's a constant i battle with that all the time like what yeah just like how am i supposed to be applying myself Mm because it's like oh i'm creative but i'm also entrepreneurial Mm -hmm. like what is the am i supposed to be like starting businesses and then or am I like actually supposed to like lean into like my like I went to when we were talking about FSU like I went to FSU to get my acting degree which I didn't finish getting but like do I fully lean in and try and make films like what is you know like what is like continually thinking about that and at the same time we have our business together that's is like the main thing that we do so it's mm-hmm. like where's the balance between all of that and how do I apply myself and everything and yeah. it's a constant like that hamster wheel is like could be pretty damaging in my head because then I start comparing myself. I'm like, okay, what are these people doing and how are they doing it? And it's like, oh, if I did what that person was doing, I would have been so much farther along than what? You guys what are the same. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the same. Well, who are you looking at though? <laughs> okay, okay. Oh we'll talk. About <laughs> that <laughs> is that is the the coolest part about our industry is like it's <laughs> so creative it's so mm. entrepreneurial it's so business-minded but every single person is doing it differently yeah 
And it's so hard not to sit down and have a conversation with someone and be like, oh, wait, I never thought thought about that mm. oh my gosh and, and then, then you you're go, like I'm, you question everything you've been doing <laughs> for the past like five years and everything like, oh. and then you try to do that and it doesn't work and then yeah. you just go back to what you're doing <laughs> we i feel like we are on that hamster wheel all the mm. time yeah what are you guys excited about right now what project hmm. a podcast podcast definitely yeah. uh, um what else I don't know. We'd moved into a new house a few months ago. Or let's two, go. Almost two months ago. That was a big like renovation project for me. So yeah. like still kind of like decorating and doing that. Yeah. That's um, been amazing. Just have it. We were up on a little bit of a hill. So we have a view and the sunrise through our like bedroom window every morning. Just like. Yeah. That's and that's amazing. like I was like started reading Ruthless Elimination in a Hurry before we moved in. And then I finished it like a few weeks after we moved in. And I was like. Oh, I'm like experiencing the goodness of God here at this mm -hmm. new home. It's like, yeah, it's been so cool. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Are you big into the wow. interior design world? Big, yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it. So Same. much fun. Yeah. We're always reorganizing furniture and <laughs> nonstop. I'm like, yo, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's like fine. Just get the bedroom done. And it's, <laughs> yeah. it's done. It's done. You don't have to do yeah, it again. that's exactly what he's like. <laughs> it's never done. No. Yeah. So they have different seasons or holidays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You both have written a book? Each, yeah. Each. Yeah. Sort of. Mine is <laughs> your traditional book that that you the read. person reads the whole thing. Hers is like <laughs> Mine's a, a, a journal. guided journal. Yep. Yeah. What inspired that? It, day day by day. Day yeah. by day. Day by yeah. day. And then uh, a mission for meaning. Yep. Yeah. We yeah. have we have one here. Yep. Oh, uh, didn't I bring it? Yeah. For uh, when I did the podcast with yep. Steven. Steven. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what inspired the day by day journal? Um, I am a big like planner journal girl and anytime a journal girly. girly if you will <laughs> and anytime i'd walk into a bookstore that's straight where i'd go like yeah. i wanted to look at the guided journals and i think it it also shows a bit of my personality of like i really like getting deep with things but i also love having fun and like doing more lighthearted stuff so i felt like i there wasn't the perfect guided journal for me and whenever I'd look at one, I'd be like, oh, I'd do this differently. <laughs> and just being such like a journal girl myself, I was like, I think I have like what it takes to make my own. Let's go. So it was really fun. And I was super involved, obviously, like um, even like down to the design process. Like I just wanted to, I wanted it to, to be just like cover to cover. So it was really fun. Yeah. And, and just released in January, right? I think so, yeah. <laughs> you know wow, more than me. <laughs> um, yeah, that's actually, that feels like that was, well, probably because you were working on it for like for two years. years before it released. Yeah. That feels like two years ago. <laughs> but even when I released it, like one of the main bits of like feedback that I got was my viewers saying, oh, this just like screams Jess. And that's like exactly what I wanted. So, that's great. Yeah. It was really fun. I'm also a big journal girl. I've been getting into it, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring you one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew journals a lot. That's awesome. A lot. That's great. Yeah. Um, what type of, this might be ambiguous, but noodle on it for a second. What is your <laughs> mission as a parent? What's the goal? It's like, if we did this, <clears throat> mission accomplished. Wow. We have a family mission statement. Dig it. Um. Do you want to go through it? No, we, it's so long. You don't want to. I hear mean, it. it's a long, long form podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically the, 10 different pillars of that, like, we want our whole family to like live by. One. Yeah. Pursue, <laughs> do, you, do you want to say it? Okay, fine. One, pursue faithfulness and intimacy with Christ and each other. Love. This is how we do it. Do we like we practice it? More? We practice it every week. We have a family team meeting every week. And then part of that is just reviewing our family mission statement and then. One, just going through it to make sure that we have it memorized, but then two, uh, kind of reflecting on how we're applying ourselves through our weeks and adjusting things to better try and like, like to, to create habits and rhythms through our week to make sure that we're like living by living it. by mm. that mission statement. So what, what's two? I do. You, I mean, yeah, we can, oh, I really I love, want okay. to. Okay. <laughs> I say we're. Fully I'm a on nerd board of this. this. We do okay. values, morals. Oh, so okay. We're doing a three day workshop this weekend yeah. on oh, no this way. type of stuff. On, oh, okay. on our yeah. whole like life plan as a family. Oh, I know. Oh, let's so, go. Okay. So, we're so, you so, have, okay. so you have to say number two. Number two, right? always encourage each member of this family 
Uh, yeah. Number three is be a home and family to others. Number four, always foster a peaceful environment. Number five, live a purpose-filled, inspiring story. Number six, be leaders through action. Number seven, be generous with our time, emotions, and finances. Number eight, be fun and adventurous. Number nine, make the world more beautiful through creating. And number 10 is prepare an inheritance for future generations. I dig it. Yeah. good. <laughs> Thanks. I know it's long. <laughs> We'll write those down. We'll take them for the next yeah, yeah, 72 go. hours. <laughs> a peaceful environment? Why is that the standard? What's uh, it, Tell me about the word peace. Um, the, I think, like, for me, it was, like, the whole depression thing. And then Jess is just, like, exudes peace and is very much, like, a... You're pretty peaceful. A home, oh, right? thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so Thanks. She just... Uh, I kind of know like, why we said that. Peaceful environment. You go. Um, Why am I talking? Well, it was, <laughs> I just have like a practical memory in my head of like when we were writing it down, but mm. we just have, we both have cousins that have incredible kids. Like, and as soon as you walk into the house, it's just like peaceful. Mm. And we look up to both of those cousins a lot. Mm. And so we like, we just want to be like them really. So we would like want to be that family for other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Dang, that guy, that book's getting a lot of love. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, he we had I have a book, we too. Had him on the I wrote a book. <laughs> <laughs> like, I also wrote a book. <laughs> 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 All right, tell us about your book. No, 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 no. No, 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 no actually, talk about it. I want to hear what you had well, to say. He, he mentions that Saul, Saul or Son, uh, Solomon says that uh, the purpose of or a good life is not, like, a high-achieving one, or it's not about wealth. It's not about travel. It's about finding peace mm -hmm. and that struck me i was like yeah interesting okay i don't even know what that word means really is it like quiet yeah no no i don't no. know it's just a feeling yeah. it's like yeah yeah it's like i you know i don't know if i have my homies over and we're playing rocket league I freaking the, love Rocket League. Rocket League <laughs> yeah. so what time are we playing tonight? Oh, no, no. Uh, I, just, I literally <laughs> just started a group chat with a few friends <laughs> I was hanging out with yesterday. We used to. Oh, my gosh. Every day at 4 p.m., <laughs> me and two buddies would play Rocket League. Bro, no. <laughs> let's go. No, there were a couple of nights pre -kids. early pre -kids. on, pre-kids, early marriage, where like I'd wake up in the middle of the night and in the house that we lived in, there was like <laughs> no place to go. And he would be like hiding in the closet. Babe, it's playing quality, Rocket quality League. time with the boys. No, I was playing yes. PUBG. I was playing PUBG oh. then, but wow, Rocket okay. League. Oh anyway, God. what we're talking about, peace and peace. Uh, anyway, yeah. like that, like, like even something like that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> even something like that. That's ridiculous. You know, just like there's something about using our home for like moments where you're experiencing like mm -hmm. so much happiness and quality time with people and that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 there's something about especially like for me like jess has always like had that peace about her and then going through depression that was like the goal is like to get back to feeling at peace mm -hmm. um and kind of having that as a mission statement and setting up our home to try and be a place of peace and um yeah i don't know it's just that's that word's been really important to us mm. love that uh, yeah all right tell us about your book now <laughs> uh, my book i basically i talk about the, a lot of like depression and a lot of the stuff that i dealt with but um, I kind of just go through. <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm cracking in this podcast. I know. I mean, it's, it's this time of year. Yeah. It's just brutal. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know what's going on. I'm like coughing too. Um, so I basically go through like my whole life, but also my family's life, like my parents, and I even talk about like my grandparents and um, my parents' story is pretty crazy. My mom has HIV, and she got that in the relationship that she was in before she met my dad and then she was given 10 years to live she was like i'm not gonna have a family that's like out of the picture now just like in her mid-20s just completely like kneecapped you know and then my dad <clears throat> with his relationship that he had before my mom he he was married to another woman and uh ended up <clears throat> having an abortion and like convincing his wife to get an abortion and Fast forward, my parents meet. They, my mom eventually tells him, he's like, hey, I have HIV. Like, you're probably not going to want to pursue this relationship. And my dad, 
he lost his mom when he was 16 years old. His mom died from cancer and his mentality was like, I'm going to love this girl even, you know, like till her last breath, basically. Um, and they, they started their relationship and this was before they, this was before they met God really. And, um, they ended up getting pregnant with my older brother and they were like, they didn't know what to do because everyone was saying like, you have to get an abortion. Like the baby's going to have HIV. Like that's just what's going to happen. And a lot of things happened where God was like kind of showing up in their life. Like my dad had a, a dream that God was basically saying like, if you kill this baby, I'll surely let you die. Like that's the phrase. And he remembers it. And that he kind of interpreted as like, God's going to take his hand of protection off his life. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's a few other things that happened. Jeez. <coughs> but, um, yeah, I'll take some of that water. Thanks, babe. See, she's here for me. You know? <laughs> it's been coughing for an hour. <coughs> I know, no. I'm sorry. Now, <laughs> now. <laughs> um, and at that point, they were like, all right, we're going to, we're just going to, we're going to do this thing. They, they got married had my older brother and the way it worked was um the ba- the baby if a ba- if the mom has HIV the baby could be born with HIV and then it stays the baby could be born without HIV and it doesn't come the baby could be born without it and then it does show up or vice versa the baby could be born with it and then it goes away and the period was usually like 2 years to know what would wow. happen um, and so it's like a roll of the dice and the best that they knew at the time was like, your baby's going to probably have HIV. So, um, so my older brother, my older brother was born and they were like, all right, we won't test him until after he's two years old, because that's the time when you would know if the virus is going to stay, if he has it and it's there or not. Um, but then I, they got pregnant with me like a few months later. So then they basically did it again, and they're like, okay, when I turn two years old, then they'll test both of us. Uh, so that wow. was the case, and then, like, complete miracle, we both ate HIV-free. And then they had my younger sister and my younger brother, and none of us have HIV, and my dad has never gotten HIV. And my mom has lived 30 years, which was, like, 20 years past the, the wow. like, death sentence she was given, which is crazy. So that's that whole, mm-hmm. like, crazy experience in their life like just drew them straight to god and um it was kind of they're they're like the first generation that god like radically changed in our family and like since then you know now they're seeing their grandchildren Mm -hmm. be born and stuff and just trying to like carry that on so like kind of starting from that story basically and telling the story of my family and then into us and our relationship and then the whole social media stuff and depression and um yeah just kind of how it all has come to basically this point yeah glad you're here man thank you appreciate it me too me too Mm. yeah wow wow yeah do you want to ask the uh we ask every couple this no pressure but you guys are seven years in Mm -hmm. almost eight Mm -hmm. almost almost seven seven. almost Almost seven seven. yeah yeah, yeah, like in a a few months that's right um if you were to give, or what is the best piece of advice you have been given or would give about marriage and your relationship? Hmm. Do you have something? Yeah, I do. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I just didn't know if you want to go first. Uh, I don't know. Either. Mine would be to don't enter a relationship with the expectation to receive something enter a relationship to give. Mm. Hmm. I still don't know (laughs) what mine would be. Mm. I think like we truly just have so much fun together and I feel like with busy schedules and then having a newborn, like, you know, life is a roller coaster, but like what we really try to do is just like keep being each other's best friend I know that sounds like cliche, but I don't know. We, we will just like crack up in the car or like giggle before we go to sleep. And I think that like 
Not that we're like super old, but it like keeps our marriage young. I feel like because we're just, you yeah. know, we like are always just having fun together. Keeps things lighthearted too. Yeah. Especially with like we're running a business together, and mm-hmm. you know all the stresses that can come with with that. Mm. I'm trying to keep the child alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I interpret that as uh, I just think of the saying to know is to love, and mm-hmm. it's like if you're always mm-hmm. seeking to know. Yours, like there's always something new yeah, to yeah. figure out whether it's that's awesome how they're thinking or you know what th- there's always a new situation to, to talk about but yeah mm-hmm. i'm so glad to know you guys yeah this you guys so fun it's great awesome. to meet you guys in person I yeah know. i know finally yeah. it's yeah. been <laughs> too long <laughs> i feel yeah. like there's so many people in our city now that uh, we all haven't met in person yet. In, yeah. in our city in yeah, yeah, yeah. Our city. City. In Sean City. <laughs> I didn't know if we were saying it's Nashville, so I wanted to be like, <laughs> we're still new. Yeah. <laughs> in the city, not ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Collectively. All right, we better close this podcast. Gabe and I have to go play it. <laughs> oh, let's go. Cool. For- <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt me with a good time. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah, no, yeah. thank you guys. We appreciate it. It's been awesome. <laughs>